Hey everybody, Sumi back with some Genshin Impact information for you guys. We're going to be looking at the housing system. I'm going to give kind of an intermediate level overview of how you should be approaching this guy efficiently, what we're looking at a little bit further down the line in the housing progression, and just some overall tips to help you get out in front of what's going on here so you're not stuck waiting as long as I am, or hopefully you can at least shave some time off of how long you're waiting. So to start off here, let's take a look at round four of the Adeptal Mirror. I just unlocked this maybe a day or two ago. And there's some obvious bottlenecks that'll stick out to you. So really quickly, round three's bottleneck is going to be hitting 5,000 realm currency. So with that in mind, once you hit round four, you'll have probably just gathered 5,000 realm currency, which means you're going to need to hit 20,000 here. You're going to need to get 15,000 additional realm currency to finish round four. So very quickly, if you're at fit for a king, which is 30 a 30 realm currency per hour, it's going to take you 20.9 days, 500 hours to generate this at maximum efficiency. So with that in mind, of the, of the four of these here that I haven't done yet, the realm currency one by far is the longest bottleneck. I did some numbers with some just assumed trust rank requirements for six to seven set, since I don't know what it requires yet, but it's going to take maybe nine days to hit trust rank seven once you hit six. Maybe a couple more for six. So you're going to be hitting trust rank seven way before you finish this guy. This is almost a month. It's three weeks to be exact. So along the way, while you're getting this additional 15,000 realm currency, you're going to go way over the 80 blueprints and way over the 160 furnishings and even way over the trust rank. So what you're going to want to be shooting for here is maxing out your currency generation as quickly as possible to hit this guy. So how do we do that? The obvious thing you're probably thinking is something along the lines of all the Reddit videos and stuff, which is just, you know, craft a bunch of those screens, Bitcoin mine go burr. But before you really jump into that, I would say that one of the more important things to do here, let me grab my currency real quick, is to try to hit trust rank six around the time that you're also hitting this, uh, this Adeptal Mirror stage four or round four. The reason is you get a fourth crafting queue. So overnight, you'll be able to finish another piece of furniture every night. And obviously, if we're looking at 21 days, the sooner you can get more of this stuff out to hit that 30 Adeptal Energy, the better off you'll be. Or the 30 currency per hour via 20k Adeptal Energy. You know what I'm talking about. So I would try to hit trust rank six and then stop there. This is like exactly where I would stop, hit it, and then just start spam crafting the four stars. Then it's okay for you to go ahead and burn all your speed ups and fill all your queues with your Bitcoin farms and all that stuff. So once again, that's 20k to hit 30 per hour. It's not too bad, but yeah, we're, we're prepared for the long haul. We're going to be here for a while trying to see what the what's at the end of the rainbow here. So expect to spend a good a good three weeks on round four. But yeah, there's a couple of things you get here. Now, furniture sets are the next thing I'm going to talk about. But before I do that, let me just give you a little bit of advice. The little mountain ranges that you buy in other people's teapots cost 40 and they give 40 adeptal energy. So it's like a one-to-one -one ratio. That alone isn't terrible. You're spending 400 adeptal energy or 400 realm currency, excuse me, to get 400 adeptal energy. That's not too bad. But by doing that, you're also getting two more of these blueprints, which are going to give you 90 trust rank each and 90 adeptal energy each. So I think it's always worth it to, as soon as you see this video, if you haven't done this already, grab your tin, just spend all your adeptal or your realm currency for the day on it if it's the weekend. If not, next weekend that you can, go ahead and just knock this guy out, get these two blueprints done. It really is worth it. So let's go ahead and jump into sets real quick. Now, the reason I want to talk about sets, first of all, is because you need to place 10 unique sets for round four. So that's not the hardest thing in the world, but if you're somebody who's already pieced together their house and is delicately interior decorated and doesn't want to move a bunch of stuff around, this is going to be a pain in the ass. Nobody wants to go pick all their stuff up, make the set, and then replace it where it was and try to remember where all their stuff was here. So if you're not at round four yet and you haven't jumped too far into your housing, or maybe even if you have and you just want a quick overview, there are a total of nine sets that the game is just going to give you for progressing in your Adeptal Mirror and buying from a couple of NPCs in the overworld. More on that later. There's nine good sets that you're just going to get all the pieces for, all the blueprints for straight out. You're not going to have to waste any speed ups crafting duplicates. Six of them are outdoors. So let's start from the left and just go down the line. These are all going to be sets that you will just have naturally. If you if you watch this video, you'll just have them all naturally doing what I did. 
because the game gives them to you in just two different spots, Adeptal Mirror and NPCs. So this first one is terrible, right? You, uh, you buy this from an overworld NPC, you need six of these fences. That is a huge waste of speed ups, a huge waste of time. Do not make this set. This set is terrible. Now, before I continue to go condemning all the other sets that have stuff like this, do keep in mind that this is only with regard to the Adeptal Mirror rank or round four. Yeah, round four. We don't know if later down the line in round five or six, it's going to make you place down 20 or 30 sets or something crazy because round two requires one set placement. Round three requires three. Round four requires 10. So the, the jumps are exponential. So if down the line it requires 20 or 30 or however many sets to be placed, you might not have a choice. You might have to place every one of these sets. But for now, we're just going to assume that we need 10 to knock out round four. So at the moment, six fences is terrible. Same for this one, three fences are terrible. Rocks and plants, this is our first good one. This is juicy. You get all of this stuff for free just for doing like the first couple of rounds of the Adeptal Mirror, and you get the Adeptal, or the, the set blueprint for the Adeptal Mirror as well. So all this stuff, straight up given to you. You don't have to do anything. Place this one down as soon as you get it, and then you can do whatever with the pieces. So that's one. This one's terrible. Two fences, we don't bother. Six fences, I sleep. Six fences, again, no thank you. Festival Market, fantastic. Go ahead and craft one of each of these. You get all the blueprints for free. I believe you get the set either from one of the NPCs or the Adeptal Mirror. This is number two. You're going to have this stuff just if you're playing efficiently. You don't have to do any extra steps or jump through any hoops or buy any blueprints. Now, Thoroughfare Entrance, Evil Banisher, you get all three of these blueprints from stage three of the Adeptal Mirror and the set itself from that stage. So there's no reason not to make this one. It's just juicy. Third good one that you're going to just get basically playing naturally. Terrible, three tables, two whatever these house-like things are. We don't like crafting dupes of three stars, so don't do that. Ignore the fact that I did it just because I was testing some stuff. I regret it wholeheartedly. I could probably be at rank four by now if I hadn't done that. Rural Water Source, great. You get this well for, I think, stage three of the Adeptal Mirror, and you get these plants and stuff for free, sets free. This is your fourth good one. Go ahead and place this one down when you get it. Now, Lone and Cautious Adventurer, you get you have to buy all three of these, right? Two different NPCs sell you the blueprints to craft these guys and the set blueprint. And these are going to be 50k Mora, Mora per blueprint. But it's worth it. Go ahead and buy those up. Place this guy down early. That's going to be your fifth. I'm going to show you guys where to get the two or where the two NPCs hang out. And one of them's during the day, one of them's all the time. We'll talk about that in a minute. Climate Crossover, this is your sixth good one. You get the set and all the pieces for free. Now, Twinkst Ancient Tree, is that how you pronounce that? Twinkst? Twixt. Twixt Ancient Tree and Rock. You do get these two for free, but unfortunately this tree, the Knotwood Tree, requires you to spend 80 realm currency to just purchase one from Tubby. It's not the least efficient thing in the world, but you're spending... 80 realm currency for a generation of 60 when the outside's already pretty clogged. So it's not the most efficient thing. Once again, down the line, if we end up needing more sets, this will be the first one that you go to outside to knock out the number, just to supplement. But yeah, for now, you have to spend 50k to an NPC to purchase this set, and then 80 currency to buy the tree. So I wouldn't bother with it for now. But that's the end of the ones outside. So if you've been keeping count, that's six good sets outside that you get finished basically for free. Albeit with a little bit of more a spin, but that's not too bad. Now, if we head inside real quick, there are three more inside we're going to go over. So, popping in here, the three good ones are going to be the Book Lover Study. This one looks a little bit daunting because of how many pieces there are, but you get all of these blueprints for free through the Adeptal Mirror. So you're going to want to go ahead and craft one of these each anyway to get your trust rank up. So don't be don't be too daunted. It's really not that bad. You just make them all, throw it down, you're good to go. Then you've got the wine o'clock. So if you looked at these four chairs here, your initial thought was probably, we don't like dupes of two stars, but actually it's not that bad. The game gives you all of these, not even a blueprint. It just straight up gives you the item for all this stuff for free for doing the Adeptal Mirror. I think it's stage one. So you already have this stuff. Go ahead and place it down. Even if you don't like it and want to move it, put it down, pick it back up. You're good. It's just looking for unique placements on the Adeptal Mirror once again. And the third one's going to be this Merchant's Working Lunch here. You get all three of these blueprints in the set from the Adeptal Mirror. 
pretty good stuff. Now, if you're a whale and you're somebody who purchased the additional $12 premium super juicy battle pass thing, you can actually make this set flat out, I believe. You might have to actually get this from somewhere, I don't recall. But you get this stove for purchasing the premium battle pass this month. If it's not in the next month, don't flame me. This is only for this month's battle pass as far as I know. So you can go ahead and make this set if you wanted to. It's relatively easy for your 10th. But for normal people and free to play, we've, uh, we've got nine good sets, right? So at the moment, you're looking for one additional set for your round four. So the Twixt thingy outside is a possibility if you want to spend the 80 currency there. But you've got the plain Liwa bedroom. This requires five different blues. So these are five different blues that you'll want to purchase the blueprint of if you choose to do this one. And the reason I bring this up is so if you're not at round four yet and you want to kind of get a jump on it, you can go ahead and start purchasing and crafting these blueprints while you're still in stage three, just to get your last set out of the way so you're good and prepared with 10 solid sets placed down whenever your mirror clicks over to round four. So that's one of the good ones. Very quickly, I'll touch on why these are bad. Four stools, we don't like that. Three stools, bad. Pay to win. Uh, two chairs, not the worst, but it's not the greatest. Now, the fully furnished Mondstadt bedroom, this one requires more three stars, but it still only requires one of each. So this is pretty juicy. So if you want to go with this one, if you'd like the look of this, the lighter birch colored wood more, you can go ahead and craft this stuff and make that your tenth. Six chairs, I sleep. Now, the, the parlor cordiality is also one of the really good ones. The hearth you have to purchase the blueprint for, the plant you do as well, and I believe the red pine wood. Now, we don't mind crafting dupes of four-star furniture. We're actually going to want to do that to max out and try to hit fit for a king as quickly as possible. We're going to be crafting dupes of our four-stars to get the most adeptal energy we can. So this makes for a good set as well. And the well-equipped study is the last good one. All these you're going to have to purchase the blueprints for, I believe. Maybe not the rug, but like all this stuff is going to have to have the blueprints purchased. But you want to purchase all of the purple blueprints as soon as you can anyway and craft those for the maximum trust, the maximum speed up. Just most efficient play, right? Craft your four stars as quickly as you can, then move on to picking one of these furniture sets and crafting all the pieces for that so you're prepared for stage four. I think that's everything that we've got inside of here to talk about, right? Yeah, I'm going I'm to go ahead and assume that's it. Let's go ahead and pop out into the overworld real quick. I've got one other little detail to go over with you guys, and that's going to be the two, the two locations of the furniture NPCs. So the first one is in Chinksa Village. Let's just take a trip over here real quick. Now, this NPC doesn't care when you show up. It can be daytime, nighttime, storming, does not matter. And you probably already know where I'm going if you've done the story quest for Ganyu that requires the purple key that you get from doing your dailies. He's just going to be down here. Once again, doesn't matter what time of day for this one. The next one I show you is only going to be during the day, so is why I bring that up. Furniture NPCs are going to have this picture or a picture of a vanity hanging above their head or something like that. So as previously mentioned, this guy is going to sell you the adventurer's burdens. Not only do you want to get this just because you want to craft one of everything you can get your hands on for the trust rank, but it's also part of one of those really good sets. Lone and Cautious Adventurer is one of those good sets, so you want to purchase this set scroll. The Twixt Ancient Tree is the one that I mentioned that isn't too bad, but you have to spend to get that twisted looking tree to complete. So you can hold off on this one if you're tight on more and don't want to drop 50k on a set. So now we're going to go ahead and head into Mondstadt over to the fountain here. Hopefully it doesn't turn nighttime before I get there. Perfect, okay. So we just jump and kind of fly around here. It's going to be right over here to the right of the Knights of Favonius headquarters. You can see the old guy down here. His name's Goth. There's the icon. Now, he's a bit better of an NPC, because he's going to sell us three different blueprints, which is kind of huge, and he's kind of hard to find if you're not looking for him. So, you've got the, the sign here. I believe all three of these are necessary for a set, but this one not so much, just because it's for the Adventurer's Camp set. But these two get used in a different set, I believe. Nonetheless, I would go ahead and purchase all these, because once again, you want to go ahead and just knock out as many unique blueprints as you possibly can for your Adeptal Mirror and your Trust Rank. Adventurer's Camp is one of the ones that requires six of those fences, so if you're not a perfectionist, you can actually leave this one. It's 
one of the bad sets for now. He's not going anywhere, so yeah, if you're trying to save more, that's two things you can avoid. But other than that, buy everything from the NPCs, it'll help a lot. I think that's pretty much all I've got for you guys, though. Hopefully that helps. Leave a like if it did or if you learned something new. If you want to see more of this stuff in the future, I try to cover things in an efficient manner, keep it concise and all that good stuff. Go ahead and sub to the channel. We're less than 300 subs away from hitting 1,000, so that's pretty exciting. I'll try to do something special for that. But yeah, as always, thanks so much for your time, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.